Hey there everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chaz Just Played, where I talk about a game that I just got finished playing while it's good and still fresh in my mind, and I let you know if I thought that this was a game worth playing, or if it was complete and utter festering garbage. Well, today's game is going to be Android, not Android Netrunner, but actual Android, the 2008 game from Fantasy Flight, where two to five players take on the roles of embittered, crusty detectives in this film noir, techno, weird future alternate universe to not only solve a murder mystery, but also conquer their own personal demons as well. First of all, for anyone who's not already familiar with how to play Android, here's a brief synopsis on how the game plays. How, how to explain this, this game. Okay, Android is an epic game in, in every sense of the word. There are quite a few different things going on at the same time. First of all, there's the murder investigation. There's going to be a number of suspect cards that are lined up along the side of the board. And really, any one of these suspects could turn out to be the murderer. It's not like Clue where it's predetermined. The actions that the players take over the course of the game are eventually going to make one of these suspects accumulate more guilt tokens, causing that character to retroactively have become the murderer. Oh, but that's just one of the many other things going on in this game. Uh, the players themselves are going to be playing these hard-boiled detectives, and each one has a different backstory. In fact, the character's backstory is a part of the game. Each character is going to have a series of cards that have these branching, almost choose-your-own-adventure-type storylines. And some storylines will end in the character's favor and be worth positive points at the end of the game. And some of the storylines will branch off to bad outcomes, which will be actually worth negative victory points at the end of the game. So the players also have to manage collecting emotional baggage, and that is literally what it is called in the game. And this emotional baggage comes in both positive and negative flavors, and the more that the players accumulate will determine which of these branches their character takes. But let's get back to this murder that we're trying to solve. In order to do so, players are going to be moving around the map from location to location, investigating evidence that they're going to find. And each player is going to be using their own custom-made vehicle to move around the board from location to location. And each vehicle has a different range that it can move each turn. And this movement is accomplished in the use of literal calipers that are placed on the board. And as far as those calipers reach is how far your vehicle can move with each one of your action points. And I'm not really sure what purpose allowing some characters to arbitrarily move farther than others each turn allows, but it, it's in there. So investigating these locations in order to obtain evidence tokens is fairly straightforward enough, except your turns are sometimes going to be interrupted by players who are playing like bad experience cards on you on your turn. Because each player also has two decks of cards associated with their character as well. A deck full of good things that can happen to you, and a deck full of bad things that can happen to you. And each player is going to be able to draw their own good things cards into their hand, and they're going to be able to draw bad things from every other player, not their own, into their hand as well, and play those at appropriate times during the game. So your investigation is going to be hindered by these random, periodic, bad things that you got to deal with to happen as well, which is pretty cool because it helps drive, drive the narrative. But in addition to moving around the map and investigating evidence and, and having suspects accumulate guilt and having good things and bad things uh, periodically happen to your character, you are also going to be unraveling a conspiracy. And that's because in the corner of this map is one of the more unique mechanisms I've ever seen in the game. There is an actual puzzle in the corner of the board that the players are going to be assembling in order to unravel potential conspiracies throughout the game. Basically, the conspiracy web is this big square puzzle that has all of these different lines that will connect in various ways depending on how the players connect those puzzle pieces that they reveal. And Along the outer rim of the puzzle are different little conspiracy things that will happen, which will affect various parts of the game, like how many victory points certain types of tokens are worth at the end. And of the eight potential conspiracies around the perimeter of this puzzle, zero or more of them may actually be revealed to be actual things that happen to the game. So you also got that puzzle you got to build while you're also going on and investigating this murder and dealing with, with, with your own personal issues. 
And in the game, each round represents one day of a two week period. And at the end of that two weeks, the player that has accomplished the most of their personal and career goals and accumulated the most points wins. It's as easy as that. All right, so Android. Now, if you thought my description of the game was, was a, a bit much to drink in, you're right. This game was one that we knew was going to be an experience. It was an event. So we kind of set aside an entire day to dig into it. And I'm glad we did, because this game, we played a full complement of five players, <laughs> and it took a while. The inst we started at noon, and the instruction period was about two hours to just learn the game. And then we started playing it, which also took a while. We, we had a dinner break and, and took a few other short breaks, but we got finished playing it at 9 p.m. So how'd it go? Okay, going into this game, I knew that it was going to be a very unique, in-depth narrative experience. In fact, that's what I wanted to accomplish. That's what I wanted to get out of this game. I wanted to have a unique experience that was unlike pretty much any other game I've ever played. Liar! I have never played another game that operates quite in the way that this one does, both with the way you're using the calipers to move around from location to location on the board, and that really interesting puzzle, conspiracy web thing that it has going on. And this game really, really came across as truly unique. And I think that that was a very, very big positive for this game. True fact. But... This game suffered from the same problem that so many other games that depend on a narrative suffer from, like, like time stories. You can have all the flavor text on all the cards all you want, but if the players themselves aren't fully committed to taking on their role and playing their character, then it's really, really likely that a game like this isn't going to come close to reaching its full potential. And in the game we played, you know, I think we, we were about 50-50, you know, we would kind of bounce back and forth between trying to get into character and, you know, reading our cards and making those decisions. But then the other 50% of the time, it was either the choices we had to make were either obvious to us or we had our own agenda or we were just playing, you know, another worker placement, do this, pick up, deliver, do stuff type of game. The, the, the role playing narrative experience while present wasn't consistent. And that's as much on the players as it is on any type of, of games construction. So that has absolutely no bearing on my opinion, totally neutral on that. Now, the main thing that was really the primary potential obstacle to my real enjoyment of the game was, was simply really that there was so much packed into it that a lot of that other things that you were doing couldn't help but get in the way of that narrative that it seemed that this game was so dependent on. There was a lot of things that you could do in the game, but more often than not, it turned out while we were playing that the things that I wanted to do, I realized would take like half of the game for me to even set up and do. And it turned out just to, to not be worth doing those things. For example, there's an option to um, put out hits and eliminate some of the suspects. So you can actually winnow down some of the murder suspects because another thing I didn't even mention yet, each player has a couple of cards of the suspect that they want to turn out to be guilty and one they definitely want to have turn out to be innocent. And if the one that you want to have be guilty turns out to actually be the guilty party, you get a whole bunch of bonus points and those are kept secret during the game. So I thought, okay, if I can put out hits to start eliminating some of the other suspects that are accumulating guilt, that's going to increase the odds that the one that I want to be guilty is actually going to turn out to be the murderer. Cool. I'll start putting out hits. But then as I start looking at the board, I realize in order to get the resources I need to put out these hits, I'm going to have to go to five different locations spread out all over the board and then accumulate these other resources, then make my way to the place where I can actually put out a hit and get one of just the three tokens that's gonna to require to eliminate a suspect. So I'd have to go through that entire rigmarole three times just to eliminate one of the suspects off the list. And, and, and doing that would take, you know, one half to two thirds of the game for me to accomplish that. And every other goal that I had to manage would just fall by the wayside. And realizing that didn't, didn't make it super fun. 
I mean, th this game was made in 2008, and it felt like we were playing a game from 10 years ago. It's weird. I, I look at Catan sometimes and, and other games, you know, from the early modern board gaming era, and, and sometimes I don't feel like they've aged all that much, you know? Uh, I could still play a game of Catan and not feel like I'm slogging through some outdated system. Of course, your mileage may vary. But, but, but this game was one of the few older games I've played recently where while playing it, I could really tell, wow, if this game was designed today, it would not have been designed in that way. So many of its elements would be streamlined, refined, perhaps even removed to better distill this game down to the core experiences that the designers want the players to have. But as a result, while I was playing this with so many different options available to me, you know, gathering evidence to convict these potential killers, to build this conspiracy web, to go around town and, uh, and find evidence and investigate it, to, to get into the narrative and, and deal with my own personal baggage or ha interact with the other players to give them things to worry about. I felt like with so many potential things to do, so too often on my turn, I ended up just focusing on one thing and just kind of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Which, in and of itself, may not have been so bad, except that another way this game showed its age is that there was a massive amount of downtime between my turns. Oh, you would like a demonstration? Okay. So, like I said, we started playing at noon right after everyone had lunch. And before long, it became very, very apparent that this game was not going to wrap up before we all were starving for dinner. So we started to formulate a dinner plan. And, of course, as gamers on game day, our thoughts immediately turned to pizza. Now, the place we were playing at really has two options available for pizza. We could have lackluster pizza delivered, or we could obtain a better pizza for our dining experience, but someone would have to go out and fetch that better pizza, which round trip is about 25 to 30 minutes. Well, after a few more rounds, as my hunger pangs continued to increase in their intensity, I came to the conclusion that if I left to go pick up a pizza from the better pizza place immediately after one of my turns ended, I could indeed get back in time before my next turn began. And I was correct. There was, on average, at least 20 to 30 minutes of downtime between each of my turns. And I do not think that a board game designed today would allow that type of thing to happen. And if it did, <laughs> people would not be happy. So in the end, Android was a very unique, interesting kind of board gaming event. It provided a compelling narrative experience. It provided a set of mechanisms that I've never really seen put together in that way before. It was truly a unique gaming experience, and it's one that I'm really, really glad that we got together and did. I am glad that I got to play a game of Android. Would I play it again? Well, while I am glad I played Android, it wasn't an experience I would really say was quote unquote fun. It, it, it was more of just an experience, you know, and I'm glad that I got to experience the event that is this game. But uh, as for whether or not I would play it again, well, you know, yeah, probably, but probably in another 10 years from now. So that's 2008's Android, a game that I just played. And do I think that you should go out and play it too? Well, this is a game that is definitely something to experience. If you want a neat crime noir narrative game that you know may or may not live up to its full potential for your group, definitely, definitely give this one a try. But I can't help but thinking that after you do give it a try, if you try it again, it's probably probably going to be a while before you try it again. But that's just my opinion after playing Android. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you own or have played Android? And if so, how often does it hit the table for you? And really, how much do you enjoy it? Do you get the full narrative experience out of it? Or is it kind of hit or miss like it was for our group? Let me know and we'll continue discussing it in the comments below. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and I want to remind you that Videos like this are made possible by viewers like you who have been supporting the Pair of Dice 
Paradise Pod Pledge fundraising page. Every contribution, every tweet, every shout out, everything about it helps and is greatly, greatly appreciated. So I want to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has been supporting the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and bell notification and I don't know, sit by your computer with YouTube open, just waiting, waiting for the next video to come out, which will hopefully be soon. But in the meantime, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. Thanks. I'll talk to you again soon. A unique experience that was unlike pretty much any other game I've ever played. That's how this game was sold to me. That's what was printed on the brochure as my friend told me, we need to play Android. This is why. Liar! No. <laughs>